know, moving on, also the same year, another show that I felt uh, over a smaller set of years uh, grew with its fan base um, in a very literal way, kind of, is, uh, is Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Oh, because, yeah. uh, you know, you have this show that, that starts off with characters in high school and it kind of ends with, you know, with college and then, like, right after college, mm -hmm. um, you know, that, that, that's exactly, like, literally the people who that was aimed at like the, like the me like people like my age like I was watching that in high school mm -hmm. and then I went to college and it was still perfect. going it was it was perfect it literally grew up with me and it did so many things for television uh, and and it was the beginning of Weed and Mania yeah you know? it was a show about subverting expectations mm -hmm. I mean uh, you just did not ever know what to expect especially after the first season of Buffy uh, where you know heroes become villains and murderers become heroes and mm -hmm. that line is constantly crossing over and you know people just have brain aneurysms and die and mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and the yeah. incredible use of metaphor the show used from, from what went on between her and Angel on through through mm -hmm. the seasons mm -hmm. and the, the evolution of the characters you look at Wesley Wyndham Price in his first appearance on Buffy and then go to the last episode of Angel and see that arc of that character. He's one of the most compelling TV characters in terms of change and growth and story that I've ever seen. Uh, it, it was just remarkably mature for a show that's fundamentally about a bunch of nerds fighting monsters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's, what's interesting too about it is that, uh, that I personally love about it is that it never, like Buffy gets to be a badass and she gets to be like, I guess for lack of a better word, like a teenage girl too. Like mm -hmm. she doesn't, it's not like you have to be one or the other. It's like, it's a it's a show that lets mm -hmm. lets her be everything she wants, anything she wants to be. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and for me that was really important because I, like my memories of Buffy are pretty fuzzy and I wanna go back to it, but um, just that was the first time I'd ever seen that. Mm -hmm. And being a young girl and seeing that on TV was really a formative experience. Seeing someone who could you know, have both sides, have, yeah. you know, the badass side and be able to just be herself. You didn't, you don't see that, still you don't see that as often as, as I would like to see that. Um, that was really important to me, like that's why Buffy is so notable. And the rest of the cast, these are characters that should have been sidekicks, uh, and in most other media would have been, but Buffy changed that. Mm -hmm. uh, these people who were, were all kind of ancillary, best friend type characters became largely the focus of the show. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I just really love that. D and then the show was so self-aware that it could parody that. You get an episode like The Zeppo, which is about <laughs> being the least important person on Buffy. <laughs> yeah. you know, it's, it, it was just amazing television. The first the first six seasons of Buffy are, are Bonafide, just about perfect. And and uh, my thing that I think I love about it the most, uh, coming a little bit, having done a little bit of acting, you know, like on the stage and whatnot, I love that Whedon and the writers they create these uh, these opportunities for the actors to to experiment. Mm -hmm. Like there's, I, I can only imagine that if you're on a major successful television show that you just get kind of burnt out after a while. Like, you're <laughs> playing the same character, saying mostly kind of the same things, the same tones. But in Buffy, they'll have an episode where, like, you're trapped in your body. You're now a puppet. This is a musical, you know. Like, and, and they yeah. and they and they give they give actors a completely different set of challenges or a way for at least an episode or two to kind of reinvent themselves and play and experiment. And that's so um, that not only that is, that is that great for the mental like health and like not getting burnt out of the actors, but it also uh, gives them a chance to show their talent and keeps the audience from burning out too. So. That's so good, Vince. Now for you, I'm curious, Angel or Spike? Spike. Angel or Spike? It's about Spike. Oh, I, that don't make me, no. Don't, don't make you choose? No, no it's no. about no, Spike. No, it's about Spike. She I, just opts out. I, I'm, I, te I'm team so Spike. So tapping out Get on that right one. out of here, it's Spike. Team Spike. <laughs> it's not even like, it's it Billy not Idol, even Billy Idol the vampire. Right, is, it's not yeah. even discussable. That, that's, like, that's like Luke Skywalker or Han Solo, a uh, Han freaking Solo. You are about to get so much hate mail. <laughs> No, uh, okay. no, I am not going to get hit actually, for choosing Han Solo over Luke Skywalker. Yeah, no, no actually, you... when you bring up that comparison, it's uh, Spike, obviously. It's <laughs> literally what it is.